this video will explain how to compute the truth values for formulas when some or even all of the truth values are unknown. So consider the formula G or H and not A where A is true and G and H are unknown. So we'll write true over the A and I'm going to put question marks over the things that are unknown. So rather than focusing on the things that we don't know, let's start out by focusing on the things we do know. So we know A is true, so that means we can figure out the truth value for not A. It's false. And well, when not A is false, then this conjunction as a whole is false. So you see, we don't need to know the truth value for G or H in order to calculate the truth value of this formula. As long as we know A is true, then we can know this formula is false. Let's try another example. This one looks a bit more complicated. But again, we will start with what we know and see where we can go from there. So we have A is true, and then we have H and G are unknown. Okay, well if A is true, then not A is false, and so this conjunction here is false, and then that whole conjunction is negated, so the formula as a whole is true. And we didn't need to know the truth value for G or H. We didn't even need to calculate the other not A. So sometimes it works out that easy. Let's do another one. This one looks super complex. So here we have A is true, G and H and I are unknown, X and Y are false. We have A is true and X is false. So it's not clear where to start, but let's start with this small piece, because we can do that. Start with the consequent. So if A is true and F is false, then that conditional is false. Does that help us know the truth value of the larger conditional here, which is the main connector? No, because it depends on the truth value of the antecedent. If it's false, then this statement will be true. And if it's true, then the statement will be false. So, well, look at that. Here we have A is true. And it's one, one of the disjuncts of a disjunction. Well, if one of the disjuncts of a disjunction is true, then the disjunction as a whole is true. So we didn't, don't need to know anything more. And then that's negated, so the antecedent as a whole is false. And if the antecedent is false and the consequent is false, then the conditional is true. So the formula overall is true. What about this example? This next example, we have everything is unknown. How can we possibly find the truth value of a formula where we don't know the truth values of any of the parts? Well, turns out sometimes we can do it still. What we need to do is we need to think, well, what if, you know, we just kind of need to walk through the possibilities and try to be maybe a little smart about it. 
So what if H is false? Let's just explore that. So suppose H is false. Well, then the conditional as a whole is true because the antecedent is false. So if H is false, the formula is true. Well, let's see what happens if H is true. If we get the same result, then we're good to go. So suppose H equals true. Well, if H is true, then G arrow H is true. Because either way, if G is false, then it's true. Or if G is true, then it's true. And then we have the antecedent is true and the consequent is true. So the formula is true. And in either case, it doesn't matter what the truth value of G is. We don't need to know that. So overall, this formula is true. And we could figure that out without knowing the truth value of any of its parts. Okay, one final example. Well, two. Let's compare these two formulas. So, given A and B are true, and X and Y are false, and G and H are unknown, we're going to compute the truth values for these statements, if we can. So let's start with this one. So A is true, G is unknown, B is true, and H is unknown. So can we calculate the truth value for A and G if we don't know what G is? No, we can't. Because if G is true, then it's true. But if G is false, then it's false. Likewise, we can't do anything on the other side with B and H for the same reasons. So it turns out that we cannot calculate the truth value for this formula without knowing the truth value for at least one or the other G or H. Is the same thing true with this formula X and G or Y and H? Structurally it looks the same, except that X is false and so is Y. And we still don't know the value for G or H. Well, if X is false, then we know X and G is false. And likewise, Y and H, because Y is false. And well, then we have both sides of the disjunction are false, so the disjunction as a whole is false. So that one we could figure out. So it just depends. So you have to, you know, just sort of sit there and think about it. And this is a good exercise for uh, helping you become really familiar with the truth tables and, you know, what, what's sort of the minimum you need to know in order to figure out the truth value of a statement.